ಓಂ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾ ಸಮಾರಂಭ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ಸ್ಮರ್ಯ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರ ಶ್ರುತಿ ಸ್ಮೃತಿ ಪುರಾಣ ಆಲಯ ಕರುಣಾಲಯ ನಮಿ ಭಗವತ್ಪಾದ ಶಂಕರನ್ ಲೋಕಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಕೇಶವಂ ಬಾದರಾಯಣ ಸೂತ್ರಭಾಷ್ಯಕೃತೌ ವಂದೇ ಭಗವಂತೌ ಪುನಃ ಪುನಃ ಈಶ್ವರೋ ಗುರುರಾತ್ಮೇತಿ ಮೂರ್ತಿ ಭೇದ ವಿಭಾಗಿ ವ್ಯೋಮವದ್ವ್ಯಾಪ್ತೇಹಾಯ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತ ನಮಃ ಪರಿಜ್ಞಾನಾಶ್ರಮ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರು ಶಂಕರ ಪರಿಜ್ಞಾನಾಶ್ರಮ ಶಂಕರ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಕೇಶವ ವಾಮನ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪಾಂಡುರಂಗ ಆನಂದ ಪರಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಗುರು ಸತ್ಯೋಜಾತ ಶಂಕರ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಗುರುರ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರುರ್ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುರ್ದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರು ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೌ ಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿ ನಾವಧಿ ತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾ ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಶ್ರೀಹರಿ ಪರಮಂದ ಉಪದೇಷ್ಟಾರಮೀಶ್ವರ ವ್ಯಾಪಕ ಸರ್ವೋಕಾನ ಕಾರಣ ತಂ ನಮ್ಯಹಂ ನೌ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕಮ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ದಿ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಪೋರ್ಷನ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ನೋ ಅಪರೋಕ್ಷಾನುಭೂತಿ ವೇರ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಇಸ್ ಕಮೆಂಟಿಂಗ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ಆರ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಸಾಧನಾಸ್ ಎಸ್ಪೆಷಲಿ ದ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಯೋಗ ಸಾಧನಾಸ್ ಇನ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇನ್ ದ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಯೋಗ ಸಾಧನ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ದ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಯೋಗ ಸಾಧನ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ ದಿ ನಿಧಿ ಧ್ಯಾಸನಂ ಹೀಸ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ನಿಧಿ ಧ್ಯಾಸನಂ ಹಿಯರ್ ನೌ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಇಟ್ ದಟ್ ಹೀ ಇಸ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ನಿಧಿ ಧ್ಯಾಸನಂ ಹಿಯರ್ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ಸೇ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಯೋಗ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಯೋಗ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಪ್ರಿಪೇರಿಂಗ್ ಮೈ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಸಫಿಷಿಯಂಟ್ಲಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೋಸಿಂಗ್ ಮೈ ಇಂಟೆಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ಟು ದ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಥ್ರೂ ದ ಗುರು ಗುರು ಮುಖೇನ ಆರ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಗುರು ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಅಧ್ಯಯನ ವಿತ್ ದ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಗುರು ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಅಧ್ಯಯನ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ದಿ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಯೋಗ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಯೋಗ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಥ್ರೀ ಆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಶ್ರವಣಂ ವಿಚ್ ಐ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಸ್ಪೋಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಗ್ಯಾದರಿಂಗ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಶ್ರವಣಂ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಐ ಡು ನಾಟ್ ನೋ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ನೋ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಮೈ ಓನ್ ಸ್ವರೂಪಂ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ನೋ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಆತ್ಮ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅನಾತ್ಮ ಬಟ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಎ ತೀವ್ರ ಮುಮುಕ್ಷು ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡಿಸೈಡೆಡ್ ಟು ನೋ ದಿಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಐ ನೋ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ನೋಯಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಫ್ರೀ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬಾಂಡೇಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಂಸಾರ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ್ಯಾರ್ ಫೋರ್ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ನೋ ಇಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಟೆಪ್ ಇಸ್ ಗ್ಯಾದರಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಗ್ಯಾದರಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಆತ್ಮಜ್ಞಾನ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಗ್ಯಾದರಿಂಗ್ ಥ್ರೂ ವಾಟ್ ಗ್ಯಾದರಿಂಗ್ ಥ್ರೂ ದ ಏಜೆನ್ಸಿ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಸಂಪ್ರದಾಯ ವಿತ್ ಗುರು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಟ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ದಟ್ ಹಿ ಪಾಸಸ್ ಆನ್ ಹಿ ಆರ್ ಶಿ ಪಾಸಸ್ ಆನ್ ಟು ದ ಮುಮುಕ್ಷು ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ದ ಪ್ರಮಾಣ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಆಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಶ್ರುತಿ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ದ ಟೀಚರ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಗುರು ಇಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಪಾಸ್ ಆನ್ ಸೊ ಗ್ಯಾದರಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಬೈ ದ ಇಂಟೆಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಪ್ರೋಸೆಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಶ್ರವಣ ವಿಚ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ಕನ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಓವರ್ ಎ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೈಮ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ವಿಚ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎಕ್ವಾಯರ್ಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಮಲ್ಡ್ ಓವರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರೋಸೆಸ್ಡ್
it is not available to me unless I assimilate that knowledge. Supposing there's a glass of milk in which I add two teaspoons of sugar, the two teaspoons of sugar will settle in the bottle. Nothing will happen. Of course, over a period of time, after a few hours, maybe slowly the sugar will get dissolved and get you know mixed equally, uniformly into the milk. But if I want this added sugar to be uniformly distributed throughout the milk, so that it is spontaneously available to me from whichever part of the glass I drink the milk, then I have to go through a process of Nidhi Dhyasanam. Nidhi Dhyasanam is a process where I make this doubt-free knowledge assimilating me and this knowledge is available spontaneously to me. Spontaneously, the knowledge is there. It is there assimilated in my entire being and it is spontaneously available to me. It's like saying my name. Supposing somebody asks me what is my name or you ask me where do I live or what is my phone number. This is a knowledge which is so well assimilated in me that it is spontaneously available to me whenever I need it. I don't have to think about it. Similarly, Aham Brahmasmi, Aham Nitya Shuddha Buddha Mukta Atma Asmi. And this knowledge, knowing this, I am really speaking not at all bound by the world because there is nothing called as the Jagat, which is nothing but Mithya. So Aham Satyam Jagan Mithya. This abiding in this knowledge, where this knowledge becomes a spontaneously available knowledge to me, this is called as Nidhi Dhyasana. And Nidhi Dhyasanam, as Lord Krishna explained in the sixth chapter, can be a sitting Nidhi Dhyasanam where for a few, for, for some time, I make it a practice like meditation. This is called Vedantic meditation, Nidhi Dhyasanam, where like I do any other meditation, I sit in one place and then contemplate over the Vedantic truths that have been accumulated or acquired by me through Shravanam and Manana initially. And then this knowledge should be spontaneously available to me every minute of my life. In every transaction I do, that knowledge is available to me. This kind of a spontaneous availability of Aham Brahmasmi, Aham Satyam Jagan Mithya, this is called as Atmanishtha or Brahmanishtha and such a person is called as a Jeevan Mukta Jnani. So Nidhi Dhyasanam is an important process and Bhagavan Shankaracharya is talking in Jnana Yoga only about the Nidhi Dhyasanam as the important sadhanam. And we saw in the hundredth verse, Tri Pancha Anga Angani, three pancha angani, 15 angas or 15 aspects or 15 parts of Nidhi Dhyasanam are talked about here. In Ashtanga Yoga, eight aspects are talked about, eight steps are talked about. But here, Bhagavan Shankaracharya takes all those eight steps from Patanjali's Ashtanga Yoga but adds on seven other angas or steps and makes it a 15-stepped approach or a 15-stepped, uh, what you call as a process of Nidhi Dhyasanam. Nidhi Dhyasanam involving 15 steps. You don't have to worry about the number. It's nothing to worry about it. As you go further, you will understand. But Bhagwan Shankaracharya, though he uses the same names as given in or as used by the yogis, that is Ashtanga yogis, the meaning of each of these words here is used in the context of Advaita teaching. Like Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratyahara, okay, Dharana, Dhyanam, Samadhi, what it is used, how it is defined in yoga, that is Yoga Shastra, is not the way it is defined here. Here, the same name is taken, but all the 15 angas are having, all the 15 steps or a process of 15 steps is having 
nothing but the central theme being the vedantic teaching of aham brahmasmi so the names are the same but the meaning of each name each anga is given differently using the central portion of the teaching of vedanta advaita vedanta as aham brahmasmi aham satyam jagannath so this is what is there and we saw that also in the 102nd and 103rd verses the names of the 15 angas were given so we saw yama yama means management okay of the sense organs and the mind yama restraining the anatma to some extent yama niyama certain disciplines which are necessary for nididhyasanam tyaga tyaga means a mental renunciation of the anatma as mithya i'll talk about it when we come to the actual explanation then mauna he talks about then he talks about desha talks about kala asana mula bandha deha samya drishti okay drik sthiti what should be the sthiti of the drishti how it should be then he talks about pranayama then pratyahara dharana atmadhyana dhyana means atmadhyana samadhi so in addition to this eight limbs of ashtanga yoga there are seven more aspects which are added and which we read in the 102 and 103 verses yamohi niyamas tyagah maunam deshascha kalata asanam mula bandhascha deha samyam cha drik sthiti प्राणसंयमनम प्रत्याहारश्च धारणा आत्मध्यानम समाधिश्च प्रोक्तानि अंगानि वै क्रमात् इन दिस पर्टिकुलर ऑर्डर इट इज गोइंग टू बी डिस्कस्ड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर ऑर्डर एज यम नियम त्याग मौन देश काल आसन मूलब दिस पर्टिक्युलर द वे इन विच इट हैज बीन एक्सप्लेन इन दिस ऑर्डर in this order of naming it will be explained also so we were to start the <clears throat> 104th verse last time maybe we introduced we i just introduced it let's go into the details of it so verse number 104 sarvam brahmeti vijnanat indriya gram sanyamah यमो यमी संप्रोक्त अभ्यसनीय मुहुर्मुहु सो नॉर्मली इन यू नो यमा मीन्स इन द अष्टांग योग यमा मीन्स एवॉयडन्स ऑफ सर्टन थिंग्स दैट इज वॉट एवॉयडन्स ऑफ हिंसा एवॉयडन्स ऑफ स्पीकिंग लाइज avoidance of inappropriate relationship with the opposite gender avoidance of stealing avoidance of accumulation or parigraha that is what is called as yama that is what ahimsa satyam brahmacharyam astheyam aparigraham that is what is the meaning given there and that's also very useful as a you know as to follow something as the values of life but here yama or restraint or avoiding certain negative habits or avoiding certain negative tendencies which are there normally in us that which is called as yama yama means no don't do don't indulge in things which are going to come in the way of your nididhyasana this yama here what does he say what is the meaning of yama here in the context of vedantic teaching bhagwan shankaracharya gives his own explanation here and it's not his own explanation it is based entirely on the pramanas vedanta pramana so what does he say sarvam brahmeti vijnanat indriya gram sanyamah when i try to understand or when i see that sarvam brahma this whole thing is nothing but brahman this whole universe that i am seeing is nothing but brahman then what is this variety names and forms and all that i am seeing here they are nothing but appearances manifestations of that same brahman therefore 
my indriyas my sense organs running after the world of objects is a mere running after names and forms so when i understand this see he is going in exactly the other way round what does yama say yama says that don't do this don't do this don't do this five things don't so that you have the values which followed are followed for the maturity of the mind but here what he says is once i have understood that i am once i am the atma and everything else is anatma and therefore everything else is mithya when i understand this automatically my sense organs are not going to run after the mithya jagat so he says sarvam brahmeti vijnanat when there is a proper understanding there is an understanding but it has not become a nishtha in me when i have heard enough and when there is sufficient mananam i have understood that jagat is mithya objects of the jagat are mithya and any time anything that i go after in this jagat is only going to give me dukham and nothing more than that when do i understand this when i understand that all that is there is brahman the names and forms are mere manifestations of brahman the names and forms do not have their own existence they are mere experiential realities but that adishtanam brahman is the reality when i have understood this i may not have still nishtha in it therefore i am still doing nididhyasanam so this is one of the things nididhyasanam that i don't have to struggle to avoid certain things but by understanding this is entire jagat is nothing but mithya what is mithya the manifest universe of names and forms is a mere experiential reality but what is there is nothing other than brahman then after what will this mind run what or what will this sense organs run they don't run after anything because there's nothing other than brahman so sarvam brahmeti vijnanat indriya gram sanyamam sanyamah that means we are not forcing or controlling the sense organs this mere understanding at least to some extent that whatever is whatever here is brahman what am i running after if that one you know understanding even if it is superficial initially comes to me automatically the indriyas will stop running after you know the other things so restraint of the indriyas he says indriya grama sanyamah by mere understanding that all that is there is this brahman but whatever i am running after is only names and forms where i understand this that is called as yama he doesn't explain it as asteyam brahmacharyam ahimsa he doesn't explain that way here he says that when you understand that there is nothing other than brahman there is no second thing to run after the indriyas are normally managed i don't have to force them into managing themselves pulling them behind i don't have to do is yamo yamiti samproktah this is called as yama okay what he is talking about is what we call in shamadama he is calling this as yama that is restraining the sense organs from running after their respective fields of objects which takes my concentration away from jnanam so he says yamo yamiti samproktah abhyasaniyo muhur muhuhu so whenever abhyasaniyo means what i have to make it a habit to think of this thing muhur muhuhu again and again whenever my sense organs are running behind something when my mind is desiring all the time for something i have to bring back this teaching of vedanta saying that everything is brahman i don't have to go after brahman i am that brahman and whatever i am going after is only anatma it is anityam it is temporary so when i understand this i have to bring this knowledge whenever my mind and sense organs are running after doing things which are not conducive for me 
this has to come in my mind. This I have to contemplate upon. Ultimately, all this is Brahman. What am I running after? I'm jealous of somebody. Ultimately, everything, that person is also Brahman. I'm also Brahman. What is this competition? What is this I'm running after? When I see everything as Brahman, then automatically the sense organs are managed without struggling to manage them. So this is what he's saying. Yamoya miti samproktaha abhyasaniyo muhur muhuhu. So one of the ways of Nididhyasanam, when my mind and sense organs are constantly running outwards towards things, let me bring that teaching into myself again and again that everything is Brahman. There's nothing other than Brahman. What the, in, the sense organ and organs and mind are running after are nothing but temporary, ephemeral, anatma, names and forms, which will anyway not last, which will never anyway give me any, you know, santosha or ananda. That when I contemplate upon that, this is yama. Next, he talks about what is niyama. Niyama means what? A discipline. What kind of a discipline he talks about? Sajati apravahascha vijati atiraskritihi niyamo hi paranando niyamat kriyate budhaihi. So, what is this discipline that he is talking about? It is a thought discipline in the sense sajatiya pravaha. Let us say, understand what this sajatiya pravaha. When I am sitting for Nididhyasanam, I see that the Vedantic teaching alone is thought about and not about any other thoughts, vijatiya thoughts. Vijatiya means that which is not in line with the Vedantic truth that I am going to take up for Nididhyasanam today. I can take up any truth. Hundreds of Vedantic truths that are there, aham triptosmi. Aham knows me. Okay, I'm feeling very, say, today I'm feeling, you know, suddenly yesterday I would have compared myself with all my colleagues and I'm feeling very, very, you know, incomplete. Apurnatvam, I'm feeling and I get up with that feeling of Apurnatvam. Che, I am useless. I am not doing as well as other people are doing. All those kind of Apurnatvam when it is there, then what happens? Which is that day I will I take up the thought for Nididhyasan? Aham knows me. I am fullness, I am Purna Atma, Aham Purna Atma Asmi, Purna Brahma Aham Asmi, Aham Purna Asmi, Aham Tripto Asmi. And that is the thought, the Vedantic thought, which should come continuously during my process of sitting Nididhyasana. Sitting is initially, maybe for a few months or years. Then I get used to it, then every minute of my waking life, Every minute of my vyavahara, this goes on. So here, that sajatiya pravaha, that particular Vedantic truth I am contemplating upon today, I see to it that my mind doesn't go out of focus. When my mind goes after other thoughts other than this atma thought, like Krishna said, very gently, shanaihi, shanaihi, uparame. Very, very gently, I bring back the mind to this sajatiya thought. Sajatiya means same thought. Like we do in Japa. Supposing Om Namah Shivaya, I am doing the Japa. I'm, it is Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. Continuously for say 15-20 minutes, which I have taken up for my meditation or for, for my Nama Japa. There is no other thought other than this. That is called as sajatiya vritti pravaha. Only Om Namah Shivaya is going on. And whenever my mind moves away from that and goes to something else, very, very gently, I pull back the mind to this particular thought. So the same thought occurring again and again for that period of meditation, we call it as sajatiya vritti pravaha. Sajatiya means same thought. Vijatiya means what? Another thought other than what I'm supposed to think of. Supposing I'm doing contemplation, Nidhiya Saman, Aham Purnosmi, Aham Purnosmi. Yes, I have heard this and I also understand I'm the Purna Atma. And when I'm doing that particular contemplation, 
some other thought comes then what do i do i must be alert pull back the mind to the sajatiya vritti pravaha of whatever vedantic truth i have taken up for nididhyasanam for that particular day so this is what is called as sajatiya pravahascha vijatiya tiraskritihi means i should bring the focus back to this sajatiya thought niyamo hi paranandha okay this niyama this particular discipline actually brings me the result of my continuous contemplation for that period of time okay so that it is it is for us now because we are no longer we are not gnanis yet and we need i i know aham brahmasmi i know aham purna atmasmi i know i am nitya shuddha buddha atma asmi still the samsara is troubling me because this knowledge has not become assimilated in me this knowledge has not become a spontaneously available knowledge to me and therefore i have to take up these vedantic thoughts as a vedantic meditation where i reiterate my swarupam again and again with sajatiya vritti pravaha to the exclusion of vijatiya vritti pravaha this is the only one which will help me abiding in the ananda swarupa atma niyamo hi paramananda this niyama only ultimately leads me to the abidance in my at ananda swarupa atma niyamat kriyate budhaihi budhaihi means what these people who are nididhyasakas they do it very very systematically they see to it that the mind does not get strayed and drawn away by vijatiya vritti pravahas so this is yama is over niyama is over in patanjali yoga ashtanga yoga niyama has separate meanings but what you should do that is ishvara pranidanam is there then santosham is there so many there are again five niyamas but as i told you here bhagwan shankaracharya is not talking about the meanings given there he is talking about the same words but meanings are in keeping with the advaita teaching of vedanta for nididhyasana next he has to talk about what he has to talk about tyaga tyaga or mental renunciation tyaga does not mean physically you reject renounce everything where uh, this one uh, kashaya and go away no it does not mean that it means an emotional and psychological mental dependence that i have on the world outside on people outside on objects of the world outside such a dependence i should get away from and how do i get away from the this thing by seeing that all these are the people of the jagat the objects of the jagat the situations of the jagat all of them are anitya they are temporary whatever sukha i get from them is only very very ephemeral momentary when i understand that very clearly and contemplate upon that very clearly automatically my mind withdraws itself from dependence on the world of objects raga towards the world gets converted into viragaha or vairagya viragasya bhavah that is viraga bhava is vairagya what is the meaning of that i realize the futility of my emotional dependence upon anatma so naturally what happens when i understand it very clearly then automatically vairagya comes out of understanding not out of forcing the mind for vairagya out of understanding so he says here त्याग प्रपंच चिदात्मत्वावलोकना त्यागो हि महता पूज्य सद्यो मोक्षम सो नेगेशन ऑफ द वर्ल्ड इन वॉट सेन्स 
negation of the world means doesn't mean that world does not exist seeing the mithyatvam of the world understanding that this is only an experiential temporary reality which cannot be depended upon and therefore i don't invest too much of my mental dependence upon the world outside so trying to move away or trying to take my mind away by itself by understanding this is called as vairagya tyagaha mental renunciation not physical renunciation tyagaha what prapancha rupasya prapancha rupasya tyagaha understanding the swarupam of the jagat how do i understand the anatmatvam of jagat chidatmatva avalokana understanding that the only thing that is permanent the only thing that is really there is only this chit atma this consciousness is the only thing which is permanent and which i abide in that is the ultimate support that's the ultimate adhishtanam the world is no longer a support for me any more there is no minus or minus in anything minus means m y n e s s minus in anything outside is going to give me any kind of a security this understanding where i go away from or give up the emotional dependence upon the other on the second thing that is what is called as tyagaha and he says tyago hi mahatam pujya tyago hi mahatam pujya and this is actually considered as one of the greatest of the at the level of sadhana chatushtaya sampatti also it is given a lot of importance and vairagya itself to a large extent gives me freedom from dukha if you have observed you know many times we would have you know been affected by certain things and when we learn to look at it very objectively and detachedly it no longer troubles me so tyaga or vairagya is actually you know gives me an immediate result of freedom from dukha because there is freedom from dependence on that particular thing when i release my mind from the dependence on a particular thing for my happiness that is tyaga that is i no longer identify myself or i do no longer depend on something else for my well being or my happiness so vairagya itself is one of the things which can give me a great freedom from you know dukha and freedom and dependence on the world what to talk about a person who is doing nididhyasana who is already a sadhana chatushtaya sampanna adhikari whatever little bit of raga or you know you know entanglement with the world outside he has that also is taken away tyage naive tyage naike tyage na yeke amritatva manushu says kaivalya upanishad na karmana na prajaya dhane na tyage naike amritatva manushu no karma no upasana nothing gives you only tyaga tyaga means what you know releasing myself from emotional dependence upon anatma for my fulfillment so this tyaga gives me you know it is respected this vairagya is the one as a sadhana chatushtaya sampatti also gives me sufficient freedom from dependence and in the time of nididhyasanam when i use this vairagya tyaga and see the doshas of the world outside i am able to abide in my chit swarupa atma chidatma avalokana so my attention is on atma avalokanam or abiding in the atma swarupa then the next one now next value that is given you know the next one is that the, after the 15 angas the fourth anga that is given is maunam and here bhagwan shankaracharya talks about three types of maunam here 
what for us what do we understand by maunam not speaking we say maunam we may not speak but then we'll start writing and showing we'll start making signs and showing or our minds are continuously chattering so just keeping the vak indriya vak indriya shut is not maunam and here three verses are you know given by bhagwan shankaracharya to talk about different aspects of maunam and in this the vak indriya maunam is given as the least important thing here so let us see what he the next three verses talk about different kinds of maunam and very interestingly taking the advaita teaching of the upanishads bhagwan shankaracharya gives three meanings for maunam that means maunam itself silence itself stands for brahman or atma because in atma there is no movement there is no sound there is no karma nothing is there so the most silent thing where nothing is there is atma so one meaning of the word maunam he is given here as the chit swarupa atma is one meaning for maunam second meaning for maunam he says the entire product of maya the entire universe which is the product of maya is also silence i'll explain to you what he means by that the third one is stopping the vak vyavahara these three are the meanings given for maunam and in the first verse he gives the first meaning saying that maunam means abiding in the silent atma swarupa mitself seeing this atma this consciousness as absolutely silent there is no activity no change nothing in that so that is the where maunam is the the very nature or swarupam of atma itself seeing myself atma as maunam ultimately all the noise is happening at the anatma level isn't it the mind is chattering the uh, vakindriya is chattering and our uh, body is chattering but where is it happening all the chattering and movement and disturbance is happening outside in the karya karana sanghata right but then what is this atma mauna swarupa atma is maunam where there is it is nothing but a center of absolute silence so i have to contemplate upon that all the sound and all the noises in the anatma in this anatma body mind sense complex and the world outside but who am i i am the silent center atma the silent center where there is absolutely not an iota of disturbance so the first verse here 2000 and sorry 107th verse 107th verse says yato vacho nivartante aprapya manasa sah yan maunam yogi bhirgamyam tad bhajet sarvada budah there is an upanishad called taitariya upanishad which says that from which all the words return that from which the vyavahara of the mind returns what is the meaning of this this atma is that which cannot be described by the words it is not an object of perception it cannot be described by words as an object at the same time the mind also cannot objectify it as an object therefore he says yato vacho nivartante aprapya manasa sah this is the exact exact thing that is given in the taitariya upanishad this is exactly what is the mantra of taitariya upanishad yato means yataha from which all the words and the mind return they are not able to describe this as an object okay and therefore he says ultimately what is it 
when you can't describe something the mind cannot fathom something the words cannot describe it sense organs cannot objectify it what is that that is silence so he says here yato vacho nivartante aprapya manasa sah yan maunam this maunam atma yam atmanam yogi bihi gamyam yogi anyana yogi understands this atma as the mauna swarupa atma so what is the swarupa one more swarupa of atma so many we have talked of nitya shuddha buddha mukta mauna silence absolute silence that's why you see gnanis are you know they are so there is peace around them there is silence around them you want to sit next to them you want to sit with them in their presence because their silence is something which is so soothing because that atma which is nothing but silence itself maunam itself that is what they are that is what a gnani is so he yan maunam yogi bihi gamyam this mauna atma swarupam is recognized by the yogis who yogis means the gnana yogis the you know gnanis is understood to be themselves tad bhajet sarvada budaha so a contemplator an idhyasaka should always <clears throat> try to see that silent center pratyagatma all the noises outside deep inside there is nothing like it is said when there is a storm all the force all the noise all the, everything is in the periphery what is called as the eye of the storm the center of the storm is absolutely silent similarly all our noises are in the world anatma outside name and form anatma and body mind sense complex karya karana sanghat but what is my nature i am the mauna atma i am that atma that consciousness in which there is no sound there is no movement of any sort no disturbance of any thought this contemplation that if i say if i am very disturbed on a particular day i can bring this i am the very silent swarupa atma silence maunam is my nature that is my swarupam all this disturbance and chattering is happening in the anatma but i am not that my nature is that mauna swarupa atma here really the real me is nothing but mauna swarupa that is the nididhyasanam that is the contemplation that i have to do upon so tad bhajet sarvada so bhajet means what this gnana yogi must always have that as a contemplation on atma swarupa next in the 108th verse he talks about the second type of maunam first maunam is what understanding that i the atma is disturbance less movementless i am absolute silence nothing other than that so that is the first meaning of maunam second meaning of maunam 108 was vacho yasmani vartante तद्वक्तुं केन शक्यते प्रपंचो यदि वक्तव्यः सोपि शब्द विवर्जितः ओके आत्मा इज साइलेंट स्वरूप नो साउंड अपीयर्स देयर नो डिस्टरबेंस अपीयर अपीयर्स देयर बट व्हाट अबाउट द वर्ल्ड आउटसाइड द वर्ल्ड आउटसाइड इज फुल ऑफ नॉइस फुल ऑफ शब्द फुल ऑफ एवरीथिंग बट देन is the world describable as something this or this or this no the world being anatma is anirvachaniyam i have already we have already discussed this any product of maya is anirvachaniyam maya is the you know what is called as the primal matter principle which manifests into the name and form matter okay now is this matter really there or not there 
it is there as an experiential reality but in reality absolute reality it is not there so how will you talk about this what words will you use when something is anirvachaniyam what are you going to talk about it so what acharya is saying is we take so much interest and so much of time is spent in talking about the world talking about other people what this should have been done what that fellow should have been done now especially with the elections coming we all know that everybody is discussing this and that and that and we are talking about what an anirvachaniya anatma prapancha so what is there to talk about it in a way it is mauna only there is nothing that can be talked about it. let me give an example there is a reflection in the mirror my own my reflection in the mirror is there anything to talk about that reflection because if you say it is there it is really not there if you say it is not there you are experiencing it is there i see a shadow when i am going in the sun is a shadow worth the talking about because the shadow if i say it is there it is really not there if you say it is not there are it is following me it is there in that case what is there to talk about it when something is anirvachaniyam that which cannot be described as existing or non existing that which as though exists but really does not exist the word given for this is mithya that which seems to exist but really does not exist is called as mithya then what is there to talk about mithya so the world is also nothing but maunam he is saying that look at the the uh, you know the way in which bhagwan shankaracharya is encouraging us to stop talking too much or thinking too much about what is happening in the world outside yeah things are happening according to you know the millions of people's prarabdhas or millions of jeevas interactions ishvara sankalpa whatever is going on is going on but then it is so mithya what is there today is not there tomorrow hours and hours i spend time in proving my point discussing fighting arguing with people debates and this and that and all what is it ultimately it's nothing but maunam because it's something which nothing can be described about you can't talk about it describe about it in any way so he says vacho yasmat nivartante tad vaktum kena shakyate that vaktum kena shakyate is it possible for anybody to talk about the jagat also is it possible you may say prapancho yadi vaktavya so pi shabda varchitah okay then even if you want to talk about the whole world and the universe scientifically geographically historically in any matter in any form you want to talk about it are there any words to explain that because jagat is anirvachaniyam anirvachaniyam means that which cannot be described that cannot be which cannot be put into this world suppose if somebody asks you what is this world how are you going to explain it it is mauna mundi isn't it so what he says is atma is maunam because that is a very swarupam of atma maya and its products like jagat also is maunam because it is something which you cannot describe it is indescribable anirvachaniyam so that also is maunam a nidhi dhyasaka who sees this is no longer interested in talking about anything about the jagat because he wants to abide in his mauna atma swarupa so prapancho yadi vaktavya even if the world is something to be talked about so api shabda varjita what can you talk about this jagat how are you going to explain it it is like talking about a reflection it is like talking about a shadow it's like talking about a dream which really has no meaning at all because what you talk today about the jagat does not hold good for tomorrow and we are talking about something which really cannot be described in world words therefore he says 
the product of maya which is the jagat also is maunam because nothing can be talked about it is shabda vivarjitaha though you may see that the whole world is a topic to be talked about it is shabda varjitaha so when we see this we really see the futility of the amount of talking about of amount of discussions that are doesn't matter it doesn't mean that you should not do it do it by all means get involved in a discussion and it's but all the time let that understanding be there that whatever we are so strongly and emotionally talking about today about this world really speaking is inexplicable tomorrow we don't know what it is going to be so you know when that thought comes then automatically the mind silences and that deep desire you know to the pressure to be involved in talking the pressure to be involved in you know the current whatever is this thing doesn't mean that you should be a, you know you should not know you should know for vyavaharika purposes we should know what is happening in the world but taking that thing as the ultimate purpose of your life of the day where i spend hours and hours on discussing these things which is nothing but maunam so he says not only atma is maunam swarupam of atma is maunam even jagat can be taken as maunam because it is shabda vivarjita it is anirvachaniyam it is inexplicable explicable therefore where is the question of explaining the world you are short of words when you try to explain what this jagat is so jagat is also in a way maunam only so contemplation on that reduces my involvement with unnecessary involvement with the jagat and i save a lot of energy for contemplating and abiding in my mauna atma swarup that's what is a second type of mauna what is the third type of mauna vak indriya vyapara is stopped vak vyavahara varjanam that is at this level at the level of the vak indriya only i take it as a discipline mauna vrata i'll say that once in a month or two hours in a day or something like that i will not talk to anybody it's a discipline good it is a discipline but then acharya shankara says it is meant for people who are just entering into the you know into this particular path of mukshutvam it should be done as a as a sadhana for you know sort of uh, making an effort to have shamadama for shamadamadi as a sadhana to use this maunam as a spiritual practice as a spiritual discipline to train my mind that is okay but he says that is only the first step it has really no other function it is the first step where you want to train your mind and the sense organ at least the vak indriya to keep quiet for some time that is only the initial step but ultimately maunam is what understanding that as a swarupam i am mauna swarupa atma at the same time this world that i am transacting with also being anirvachaniyam there is nothing to talk about it it is shabda varjita so if these two things are no just imagine the amount of peace all of us will have very very peaceful it will be world it is going on in its with its own laws ishwara's laws are taking the world the way it has to go my talking and discussing and trying to prove myself to be right or this or that and giving hundreds of references and this and nothing it has no meaning at all so if i understand this that is what matters he needs so these three types of maunas the third one he is talking about in the verse 109 इति मौन सता सहज संगीत गिरा मौन तो बाला प्रयुक्त ब्रह्मवादी सो इसे यू नो दैट इज दि आत्मा इज द मौन स्वरूप एंड द वर्ल्ड हेज नथिंग टू टॉक अबाउट दैट इज ऑल्सो इन अ वे मौनम 
it is the understanding of the wise people whereas silence by the organ of the speech being restricted is prescribed only for the ignorant ones okay and who advises them the guru advises the shastra advises tells yes follow maunam as a vrata you follow it as a discipline you follow it because the initial discipline requires the vagindriya to be kept you know silent then comes the mental silencing for some so this is only prescribed initially for a sadhaka by our the scriptures also prescribe maunam as a discipline the guru also describes or you know prescribes maunam as a discipline it is only initially for the you know new entrant so it says giram maunam giram means paucity of words giram maunam stopping the words to balanam <laughs> balanam means for the you know the beginners you know of you know mumukshus the beginners mumukshus who are trying to discipline their lives for this purpose and prayuktam brahmavadi bihi brahmavadis or gurus or brahmanyanis will also you know tell or will also prescribe this as an initial sadhana balanam it is for the initial for the students or for the mumukshus as an initial sadhana but ultimate meaning of maunam is what to see myself as the very mauna swarupa atma and also to see the ishvara srishti prapancha also as that which cannot be described in words so that's also shabda vivarjita and therefore better i look at it silently and appreciate the laws of ishvara and it has nothing to be talked about because there's nothing right or wrong or whatever it is it is following a certain order and maunam is the best way of interacting with the world also it doesn't mean that you don't talk at all yes whenever it is needed we talk whatever vyavahara we have to do we do but understand very clearly that this jagat also is shabda vivarjita being anirvachaniyam being something which is indescribable by words which comes to literally being maunam so, okay then the this 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 one is over here then we he goes to the next particular anga that is what is called as the desha you know after silence he goes to desha and kala so just one verse we will just start desha means what here we had seen in bhagavad gita vivikta deshe in a place initially a meditator has to find a place which is free from any disturbance which is free from too many sounds and it should be an isolated place where you know it is conducive for me to sit where my mind can also get involved or focus on meditation vivikta desha that is also for the beginners for the new entrants that's what he is saying here but here what shankaracharya says desha means what there is really vivikta desha okay where is the question of vivikta desha because atma is vivikta desha itself it is all over it is everywhere but nobody can disturb it nobody can either in the beginning or in the middle or end it is without any kind of an influence of anybody else it is independent adhisthanam of everything therefore when i say vivikta desham i have to understand that my i the atma itself is that desham or that which is not affected by anything else asangah i am i am in and through everything sarvagatah but asangah that is what i have to understand so he says here 110 adavante cha madhye cha jano yasmin na vidyate yene dam satatam vyaptam sadesho vijana smritah yena idam satatam vyaptam yena by that consciousness or atma idam this whole thing is vyaptam 
that means that which is all pervading everywhere is anyway vijanaha it does not have any kind of a disturbance of people or anything in that abiding in my atma swarupa is like being in a forest i don't have to go anywhere i don't have to get rid of the human company anywhere that's what he's saying i think it's quite uh, late now i'm sorry oh. nandantu sadhaka sarve vinashyantu vidushakaha avastha shambhavi mestu prasannostu guru sada sarve bhavantu sukhinah sarve santu niramayah sarve bhadrani pashyantu ma kashchit dukham apnuyat om shanti 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 ओम तत्सत